right, and welcome back everybody to the Brittany Rossi Show. I have a wild woman with me today, and you'll hear why in just a second. Um, but I have my friend, Aunt Andy. I always want to say Andy, Andy Hornis. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about her because she has a really fun um, backstory. So um, she is half roller derby star, half veteran yoga teacher living in Austin, Texas, which is very near and dear to my own heart. Andy um, shares her unique experience coming into online dating. She was single at 41 with two young sons after being in a committed relationship for over 20 years. And she admits that she had never really dated before she got married and entered the modern dating scene with the skills of a teenager. And so the lessons she has learned along the way has enabled her to finally create a fulfilling and fun relationship with a smart, generous, ambitious, spiritual, financially abundant, and sexy guy instead of a needy hot mess with red flags that she dated for six years post-divorce because she didn't really know what she was doing. And so she now helps women who are brand new to the online dating scene who are kind of scared to put themselves out there. And she starts her clients with some foundational pieces um, by picking the right dating app, creating an online profile, choosing the right photos, all of those good things. And so as a business owner and mother, Andi understands the importance of creating a sustainable love, work, mom, life balance, and how to make it all work so that her children see her as the model of how to have a healthy and fun and supportive relationship. And so the people that are not successful, they just really don't understand the online world or have some romantic relationship skills that need evolving. And so she's really sought out because of her knack to see the big picture and no BS approach. She's a straight shooter and her ex expertise in breaking down her client's struggles into positive, empowering, and actionable steps. And so that's what really sets her apart from other online dating coaches. And so she has had about five years of being an online successful business coach. And uh, she really knows how to work the online space and get results. Now, here's the really fun part. She has been published in Mind Body Green, Greatest Austin Woman Magazine, Thrive Global. She's been quoted in Forbes, Cosmopolitan, Bravo TV, Men's Health, Women's Health, as well as many other podcasts, including this one here. And I think that that is about it um, for this introduction, which is just so amazing. And so she's going to be talking to us today about how romantic relationships increase your revenue. So it's totally relevant to you and your business. So thank you so much for joining me, Andi. I'm going to turn it over to you and let you kind of take it from here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That was such a generous, you know, I think everybody should just be introduced every day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I could just, I'm going to probably have to re-listen to that part because I was like, oh, wow. You know, that felt really good, but I'm super excited to be here with you guys, whether you are single or in a relationship. Right. Um, because one of the things that I want, um, that I've discovered, well, actually, Malim, let me just start for a second. Um, I want you guys to just take a moment. I want you to imagine a time that you didn't have money to buy something that you wanted mm. and just, just go there for a minute. And I want you to come up with like, what was that? And then how did that feel? Because that happened to me. Um, and so, I mean, I know a lot of us, a lot of us, um, you know, start out our, you know, online, our, on our, our businesses, you know, we're all entrepreneurs, like our businesses with all these like big dreams and goals. And you hear of like all these, you know, seven and six figure coaches out there. And the reality is like most people that start their coaching business, um, around, around the 20, you know, 20,000, $25,000 range. Mm -hmm. And it's, and even though they're doing well, you know, they're, sell, they're selling like 3K packages or 2K packages or whatever, which all sounds really great until you start doing the math and you're realizing like how many you have to sell in order to, to create the income that you want. And so essentially that's, that was, so my story is three years ago, I was at the dermatologist and I was getting a mole check. I grew up in um, Los Angeles. So I've been in the sun a ton. I was at the mm. beach and she yeah. found something and she asked me if I want to get it taken off and checked for skin cancer. And so in my brain, you know, I was like, ah, it's probably nothing. And I knew that my sucky insurance wasn't going to cover it. 
Mm. But I went for it because I was like, you know what? I'm already here. And I'm really glad I did because it was skin cancer. I had like a basal cell like right here and they had to do like this little surgery on it. But I guess this is what I'm saying. At that point, I realized I was already in my business. I realized that I need to make more money because I did not want to be in a place where I had to put my health um, on the back seat. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it was a really like a hard stop for me. Um, and so I started, you know, looking over like my, my coaching practice. And I mean, my dating coach, I was doing okay. Like I said, I was probably making like $30,000. I was probably selling like 10, 3K, like one-on-ones at the time. It was doing okay. I mean, I, I come from being like a, te- a teacher. So, I mean, I think I made 44000 then. So it wasn't like I almost replaced my income and I definitely had like the lifestyle and the passion and I was excited about getting up and creating all that. But I wasn't not where I needed to be in order to like have two teenagers to be able to, you know, go to Whole Foods and go to like Central Market and buy organic and get my moles checked and all this. Yep. And um, so... I guess this is it is what I realized um, is that I, oh, and at the time I was single and I had been dating, like you said, a bunch of red flags and um, a bunch of, you know, guys that I, that weren't, I wasn't receiving. And that's what the big aha was, is that I was very clear to me that I didn't know how to receive. I was having all of these like bad dating experiences. And then even though my coaching business was doing all right, like I said, I was selling like, you know, some 2K packages, 3K packages, and I was getting it. I wasn't receiving abundantly. Mm -hmm. And the way that I knew that is because I decided to increase my prices. Um, my, you know, I was like, okay, it's time to increase my prices to 6k. And I remember I couldn't do it. I literally, I remember being like on the discovery call. And when we got to the point where she said, or I said like, she was like in and all this. And I literally was like, I prefaced the price by saying it's really expensive. And the girl just went like, ew, right? Like, and right then and there, I realized I was only at a level to be able to receive at $3,000 or whatever, $30,000. Like that was my limit. When I was dating, I was only able to receive where I met them halfway. Like they, I had, I paid for half of the meal, um, I was only able to, everything kind of had to be fair in my mind. And so what I realized that if I was a going to like have a a good solid business where I could like increase my money, I had to practice receiving. I wasn't even planning on, so I went back online dating to practice receiving. It wasn't even really to find love. That's a really interesting perspective on that. And I think for some people who aren't even familiar with this idea of like operating from a place of abundance or coming f- or being able to receive, that might be language that's a little bit foreign to some of my listeners here. And so I'd like to take a minute and ask like, what's a great way for someone to understand like um, maybe like abundance mindset, scarcity, mm-hmm. mindset, being able to receive um, abundantly, you know, can you unpack that a little bit for us? Absolutely. Like, so when I think of, I, okay. So someone that's abundant means that like, they just assume that every, like they, in their mind, like they're always going to have more than enough. Right. Where I have always been operating at just enough. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I could live off, you know, 30, 40, $50,000. I can do that. You know, I know how to like scrape pennies and all that kind of stuff. And I actually, it's not a big deal. And then someone with a scarcity mindset has never enough. So I wasn't at scarcity mindset, but I was definitely at, I cannot get and have the things that I want. It was always just enough. And what, what I found is that I had this 
this inner story of everything has to be like fair. Does that make sense? Like absolutely, everything had to be fair. And so I was unconsciously making everything fair. And when you're making everything fair or whatever, I wasn't able to, that's not necessarily abundant. Because mm -hmm. abundance, like there's just tons for everybody. Where fair is like, they did this and I'm doing this and they're doing this and I'm doing this. Yeah, I think too, and just to kind of paint this one more way to make sure people are understanding this, like um, coming from a place of abundance is kind of like, um, even if we make it in terms of just money, right? If someone is always operating from a place of like, oh, well, this is my check. It's finite, right? I've got a hundred bucks until the end of the month. And, you know, but I'm going to get another check because I'm still working. And so I can spend all this. I can be generous. I can pay for dinner for people. Right. And I know more is coming to me. Whereas somebody who's coming from like just enough, they're like on the budget, they're on the line, there's no room, there's no flexibility. And then people coming from a scarcity mindset might be saying like, you know, I've only got a hundred dollars and I have to hold on to it. And it kind of makes us become a little bit more tight fisted with mm -hmm. uh, things in our life and not just money, but even relationships. Like this person doesn't have enough time to spend with me and this other person, exactly. or the friend or a spouse or a child, you know, this translates into lots of areas of our life. And I'm so excited that you're addressing this because it really does translate from our personal relationships, intimate relationships into business totally. and those business relationships in other areas. So I, right. I love that. So what are some examples for us to know kind of like if, if we are at that like just enough place or even scarcity, how would someone like me start learning how to receive? What are right. So, so this is the, and so learning how to, well, let's just even say learning how to increase your capacity for more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So like this, let's go down to the practical part, but that's, this is essentially why I went online dating is because I realized what I had done is I left a marriage where I didn't receive, and then I just replaced it with a business where I didn't necessarily receive. Mm. Right. And then, and then, and then a dating life that wasn't necessarily receiving, it was okay, but I was doing most of the work and I wasn't. And so I realized, wow, I, I am doing this. And so whether or not like you're single or in a relationship, it would be time now to do like, take some stock, like in the relationship and then also like in your business life. So let's go down here. So well, I just, one of the first steps that I have, oh, and so what I did was I just started small. Like I started saying like, okay, instead of like offering, like I used to go and I would go get my coffee before or we'd be in the line and I would like pull my wallet out because I was being unfair or I didn't want them to think I was wanting them for money, right? Like I used to think that was like my business. Like I was afraid to, to ask for the for the sale. I used to be afraid to say the price. I used to think that the price was too big. I used to think this and the other, that I had to keep adding all these things in order to justify the price. Well, that's what I was doing in like my dating and love life. Like, mm. oh wow. So I, I started making myself like, okay, we're going for a cup of coffee. I had started to increase my capacity to let people take care of me, to give for me. Yeah. And so we would be in line and I would have to make myself like not pull my wallet out. Like, let's see if this guy will buy me a cup of coffee, like $2, right? Yes. Right. $2. And I had to get really comfortable with that. Then I'm like, okay, I need to increase my capacity. Then maybe it was like lunch where I would just put it away. I would just assume abundantly that he's got money and like, I, and it's not so much like making people do things for me because then I would do it like next time. Right. If we had like right. a second date, like, I was abundant too, like, but it was this, this need that I needed to increase my capacity and feel that uncomfortableness of what it was like to not be giving to somebody, to actually sit back and let them take care of me. Right. And typically I think that for, especially female entrepreneurs, we are givers. We're really yes. generous. We go above and beyond. Yes. So there are high standards. And for us, you know, in this demographic to learn how to receive really, it is a challenge. And this is a pattern that might go deeper than just like mm -hmm. this. If you're noticing or you're resonating with what Andy and I are talking about today, like there, there might be room for us to take stock and say like, 
hmm, is there room for me to start receiving more? And that right. can even look like letting someone come over and help you fold laundry mm-hmm. so that you don't have to outsource that. But exactly. it's really hard for us to receive help even. Right. Um, in our business. So think about that where it shows up in your business. So some of the places where it showed up for my business. So then the same thing, as I was doing this dating, I was increasing my capacity for receiving. I had to start doing it in my business. So the same week, like on Monday, I would have a plan, like how, what's one more step that I need to take. And so I looked and I took stock. Like I had a mentor that say, be generous, but do it in small doses. So some of the ways that I was over giving and not receiving, because if I'm over giving, I'm taking away from me. I would, instead of my 50 minute calls, each call would be 60 minutes, right? I'd let it go over then I wouldn't be able to go pee before the next call that, you know, the next client. Right. So even there and think about that 10 minutes builds up over and over. And then I have, I getting no break. Right. Right. Another way was I was letting, let's say they had six sessions and I didn't keep it within, you know, the eight weeks, I would let it go on for six weeks or whatever. So then the container just got too big and, then they would get, let's say they had um, Voxer, you know, then that they would keep, um, or, or they would send me, let's say they had WhatsApp or Voxer privileges, they would leave like a seven minute message, which is like almost a third of like a session that goes for about $400. So wow. it was like that kind of stuff. I had to start really tracking like what, you know, how many emails are they going back and forth where they're, you know, like I had to start saying book a session after your second response, you have to book a session. I had to just start tightening up. Mm -hmm. Same things that I didn't um, charge extra when it was a payment plan, even though, you know, just the little things like that, but all of that starts to add up. And when I started really tightening up my ship, same with like my, my VA, you know, like, I used to not be very good at holding people accountable or me just doing it or being okay with medium, you know, performance or errors. Right. Yep. And these, I think are places that when we hear other female entrepreneurs who are being successful and that it was a challenge for them too, I think it makes us feel less alone. Like I'm not crazy and I've been needing to do this, but I haven't known how, and now I have language for it. Like I have a low capacity for being able to receive and, you know, take care of myself too. And it is, you have permission to receive. You have permission to take care of yourself because you are already generous. You are already a giver. Totally. It has to be a balanced transaction, right? Give and take, right? So I think that that's really, really insightful, Andy. Thank you for, so much for sharing sure. about that. In your Can experience. I give a little step-by-step? Absolutely. I was going to ask for one. Yeah. So this is why, so this is something I'd love for you to do. Um, like I said, whether you're single and dating or you're in a relationship, I want you to track, track like what's going on during the day. So like, these are the things that I put in like my relationship. I'm making the plans. I'm bringing the fun. Like you got to like, if you bring the fun to like a relationship, you need to count that, you know, um, being agreeable, helpful, being positive, problem solving, listening, being available. These are all emotional ways that we're giving, right? Right. Getting the movie tickets, inviting, being easygoing, doing, you know, letting, doing whatever the other person wants, like giving them a turn, you know, like I want you to just to start tracking this stuff. Um, things in like your business, right? Creating content, free consults, messaging people on Facebook, doing free talks in other people's groups, um, meeting randos for coffee who want to collaborate, talking with friends about her husband's problems, investing, investing in other coaches programs. I want you to hear is Mm -hmm. a really big thing that we do that supporting other people. Sure. It helps us, but I also like, that's my big, and that when we talk about my word later, I'm not, I'm committing to not investing in any coaches program this year in 2019. I have invested plenty of money and made plenty of people very rich <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy for it because they've trained, they've taught me a lot of things. But when you ask me what my word is, <coughs> my word is mine. This year, I'm not making any 10, I'm not making any five, 10, 20,000 investments in other people's programs. My money is now staying in my business 
and creating, I already know enough. Yeah. Like I need to be creating in my business um, and using that money for my, my expenses. So that's something big. Yes. Um, I love that. Free Facebook group, spending too much time in my paid Facebook group, like um, just all that kind of stuff. Like it just adds up. So, so just write down all the things that you're doing. And then I want you to make a T chart, you know, it's like the T on one side, put give and one side receive. And I want you to categorize those. And I want you to see how much you're giving in your romantic relationships and also in your business. And then also, how are you receiving? Mm. I think that that's a very powerful exercise and it's so visual. It probably only takes a few <coughs> minutes. I'm sure we just set a timer, grab a notebook, piece of paper, and you know, take stock. And I think creating time for self-reflection is really a good investment of our time. And it really benefits us in the long run. And it's good to do it every once in a while too. Even if this is something you've done before, it's great to be reminded of this tool, this exercise mm -hmm. that helps us stay on track and say, you know, I've been feeling imbalanced. I haven't been able to put my finger on what feels right. off, but really I've been drained. I've been drained by my Facebook community. I've been drained by my marital relationship. I've been drained by my kids. You know, we have drains in our lives that cause our, our relationships to go out of whack and that's life, right? That's normal, but it's within our control to bring it back to balance. Absolutely. And I recommend putting in your calendar, like at least doing this every quarter. Because that's it's so easy to go back, right? Yes. I love that. I think that's a great time frame, like every 90 days. Yeah. You know, take stock. Take, take like a, yeah, and go, go sit goals. on a blanket outside, you know, with your journal or whatever, and just use it as, and then just start crossing things off. Say, what needs to go over here? What needs to go over here? And start like creating your life versus just letting it go be on default. Yes. Don't let it go on autopilot. You are in control of your future. Absolutely. Your, your income, your finances, all of that good stuff. So very, very cool stuff. Thank you so much, Andi. Totally. Have any um, last thoughts on that particular topic before I switch? Yeah. Well, I think what it is, is what the reason why I, it was easier for me to, to, to start doing it in romantic to go online dating and to go in romantic relationships, because that's something that I could do right now. I didn't necessarily know when my next client was going to come mm -hmm. and then I was going to have the opportunity. So I got to start practicing, like start now. Like if you are in a relationship, like, and you might need to have like a combo and say like, Hey, um, you know, I feel like I've been, um, this is on me. You know, you take responsibility. This isn't about like blaming the other person, but I've been, I've been feeling drained, use your words. I've been feeling drained and I'm needing to, you know, reorganize a little bit of things. So things might be a little bit different. Um, I might be asking for more help, you know, just give, if you have a partner, give them like a heads up. Yes. If you don't have a partner, go and like find ways for you to just start receiving like out in the world. Um, I want you to hear that like building your capacity for receiving, it like exponentially uh, lights you up. I mean, talk about, because nothing is going to burn you out. I mean, I'm sure you guys have per, felt burnt out before. Like nothing's going to burn you out more than giving too much and not getting anything in return. That's I mean, okay. that's, it's just, it's, and you, and you, you started your business for a purpose, right? You have a yes. purpose, you have a mission. And if you want that mission to succeed, right? So that you can have the impact that you want, you, you have to be able to make sure that you are fueling yourself. Right. And this, this is a discipline really is what it is. And a lot of people get stars in their eyes and they're like, well, I could do that or I could do this. But when it comes down to these tough things, making decisions, right. holding people accountable, saying, nope, this is my boundary. You have to book a session if you want to continue this conversation. Right. You know, that's the tough stuff that I guess kind of like um, scrapes away at the foundation of a business. Exactly. And ultimately- that's why people don't, don't last. It, it wears you out emotionally because you don't know and you don't have the tools to be able to build this discipline into your right. life. And my guess so is that if it's happening in your business, it's also happening in your romantic relationships or maybe your kid relationships. If you have children, mm -hmm. maybe you have older parents that you take care of, whatever, like this, this pattern of you over giving and not receiving is in all areas. So start to you know, really look at it because I want you to hear it. it's serious. 
Right. And it's not an attractive thing to always operate from this drained place, really. Yeah. Um, to operate from a place of abundance is a beautiful thing. We are attracted to people who operate that right. way. But when you are constantly like, oh, I'm so tired, or I've got this to do. And it's like, right. you know, when you're stumbling and bumbling forward, yeah, that's forward motion. We have to celebrate those moments when they happen. But that shouldn't be our modus operandi. Like we should right. be thriving. We should be yeah. know, in those relationships. Absolutely. So for us to kind of say like, oh, I'm just a giver. I'm so generous, you know, and I just give, give, give. Well, that is beautiful. But not to the point where you're like lying on the ground. <laughs> no. And, and one of the things is if you're giving so much, you're not giving the other person the opportunity to give because you're just heading back that way. And we as humans actually like to participate. You know, there's very few people that are just takers. I really think they get a bad rap. I think the other person's giving so much that they have trained the other person not to give. There's so like, let's just, yeah. let's just, let's just bring this back, you know, into balance. I think that's so good. So good. Yay. To pause on, because I don't think this is the end of your story or our story together, Andy. And I hope to have you back on here. Someday. Yeah, that sounds so great. Like um, I said. No, just my word for this year is mine. Like I've, I, I, I'm, I'm looking out for me first. Yes. And I think that there's definitely seasons where we have to put that stake in the ground and say, you know what? I have to get my own house in order before I can help other people. Exactly. Right. And that's, that's a principle that kind of feels icky when you first like maybe say like my word of the year is mine. And people are like, what kind of selfish human being? Totally. Right. But really, if we can't get our own stuff in order, if we can't put our own oxygen mask on first, if the right. plane's going down, we really can't help other people. And that's why we started this, these businesses is to help people. Right. Exactly. So Andy, do you have anything projects, launches coming up that yes. you would like to share with us? Yeah. So something. if there is, well, I've got two things. So if there is, um, I have two groups. I have a group that's called um, Stalling to Falling in Love. It mm -hmm. is for single uh, women. Mostly, most of my clients are entrepreneurs because those are like the, the groups that I hang out in mm -hmm. um, that want to learn how to successfully use online dating to find your perfect guy. And I want you to hear that if you're really good at online dating, you're going to be actually really good at online marketing, which is going to help with your business. And so if you're not having success in either area, that needs to be tightened up. And so we essentially, I essentially take you, take the guys, I teach you to take the guys through like a sales funnel. Like we start with ideal client. Um, so that's coming up in the fall. Uh, the cart opens September 24th, but in the meantime, I've got two guides for you because you've always got to start with your profile. I've got a dating profile that attracts your ideal guy and 10 signs he's unavailable. So that's, that's one avenue for my singles. And then what's really cool is all my singles that get in relationships. I have another group and this is for those of you that are in relationships. It's called don't mess it up Chica. And it's just essentially about, um, <laughs> It's, it's a follow-up. It's so that's continuing ed where it's not as intense as before, but it's, we do continuing ed. And I got to share this morning how I got super mad at my boyfriend for wanting to have a party because last time I did all the dishes for it. And he goes, well, I didn't ask you to do all the dishes. You could have asked me for help. And I'm like, you're right. You know what I mean? It's just like realizations like that. Like, okay, I didn't need to do all the dishes. I took that upon myself and then I chose to get mad at him. So it was this, it's a group where we start to process and talk about things like that are coming up in your relationships and how that we can now bring like some insight and another set of eyes on them so that we can keep sustaining and feeling really good and happy and balanced. I've got two paths. I love that. I love that you've definitely got both sides of that equation covered. Yes. So good. And um, also just as a branding person, I'm obsessed with the stalling to falling um, title for your program. Thank you. Those are so fun for, for names. So guys, those links will definitely be in the show notes and other places wherever you're catching this video or podcast. And um, you can find Andy at andyforness.com. Again, that link will be somewhere around this podcast or perfect. And, um, and like she said, I usually close these interviews with their, um, favorite inspirational quote or word of the year. And clearly Andy's is mine. We've talked about it a little bit already, but do you have a favorite um, book? It could be a business book or. A yeah. Book. I mean, I will say, okay, so two books, my favorite business book was profit first. 
Well, I have a million, but that one, one was huge for me in terms, because I came to the online space as a teacher. I used to, you know, teach yoga. Um, I was not a business person. I didn't even have like a spreadsheet. So if you're just starting and you don't have a business background or mind, like, and I'm also love to spend money. So, um, profit first was a great for me to be able to, it just literally taught me step by step, like how to set up a business financially to keep me in the green and not in the red. So that was number one. And then my favorite, I wouldn't say it's my favorite book, but the one that I've been thinking about when you said that it's called a man called Ove, and I could be saying the title a little bit wrong. It's O V E. What I love about it. And it ties into dating and relationships is um like even like i said i was in my head i was calling my boyfriend like selfish last night for wanting to have a party you know what i mean and and what i love about this book is this guy comes off to be a grumpy old man because that's how he shows his persona to like the world but when you read the book you get to know like he's just he's 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 totally different like on the inside and that's one of the things that when I coach women, it's, we've got to like, get to know the insides of people instead of just making all these snap judgments, whether you're in a relationship or not. Like we've got to really get more curious about people and their motivations and their actions before always just assuming things. Yes. I think that's so good. I'm going to have to look that one up and read it. I'm a big. Yes. Big oh, and I'll so actually hear the added. whole series. There's a, there's a bunch of series that are awesome with it. Okay. I will definitely look those up. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh my gosh, thank you. It's been a gift to have you on here. And um, that's it, you guys, for the Brittany Rossi Show. And I hope to catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. If you would like to find additional resources or workbooks that were mentioned in this podcast, just head on over to BrittanyRossi.com forward slash podcast, where you can find all the episode details and show notes.